two friends flew off together. Now look, Boris. Boris? Oh, oh, sorry, Major. Try to concentrate, boy. I will, sorry. Boris did not, did like this bird, but he was jolly bossy. So this straight one is number one, and this is a plus sign. Boris was thinking this part is not much fun. Boris, listen, my boy. Put it this way. The quicker we get this done, the quicker it's over. Now, Boris could see this logic, so he would give it the best of his attention. Ah, here he is. My choke saw Timmy making his way across the park towards the fence. Oh dear, something was wrong. Timmy slowly crawled up the vast trunk and then faced the tree. My choke, I'm, I'm sorry I've been so long. It's, it's not good news. There's not one anywhere. There was one on the Isle of Wight. Turned out it was a girl. I really feel like I've let you down. All the birds are spreading the word. They understand it's vital to keep secret from everyone else and speed is of the essence. There is a possible hopeful one, sir, but he is in Scotland. An eagle is sure his cousin was talking about one who lives in Scotland. Timmy, why are you so long-faced? It's marvellous news, is it? Yes, my boy, thank you so much. We have to wait a little while, I'm sure. Don't fret, Timmy. Timmy felt better. He had hoped to have different news, but if my choke wasn't worried, then he wouldn't be either. Where's Boris? He's up there with the Major. The Major? Yes, Timmy, the Major. He's teaching Boris basic maths and English, also how to draw. Oh, OK. My choke loved Timmy so much. He never questioned or queried. He just had absolute faith in him, believed everything would be sorted out. Andrew came into the garden. He had just got home from school, still had his blazer and cap on. He hadn't even put his satchel away. Where did you say it was, ma'am? Andrew called out. At the bottom of the tree, Andrew, with a box of crayons. OK, replied Andrew. He reached Mighty Oak. The Major placed his wing over Boris's mouth. Andrew looked everywhere on the ground. Can't see it, ma'am. He called out. Don't shout, Andrew. But, oh, he muttered to himself. Mum calls me, but if I do it, I'm shouting. Grown-ups drive me crazy. There's no way I'll be so annoying. Andrew carried on looking for the drawing pad and crayons. They were not here. Andrew looked up the way we all do when we've lost something and can't find it. Inexplicably, we look up. He even laughed at himself. What am I looking up for? Wait a minute. What's that? Way up high. He could see a long black thing hanging on a branch. It's not a snake, is it? Mum! He, he started to call and then changed his mind. I'll go. It'll be Andrew, you're shouting again. Andrew ran to the cottage. Boris, your tail, lift it up now. Oh, right. Rose and Andrew came into the garden. Andrew, I haven't got time if this is one of your jokes. I'm cooking your dad's favourite, liver and bacon casserole. I can't let it spoil. You won't, Mum. Just quickly look. Now look up there, right? Oh, it's gone. Andrew! I promised Mum it looked like a black snake. Well, it's not there now, is it? Andrew looked fed up. Timmy wanted to cheer him up and ask him how his essay went, but those days had gone. Andrew, you little what's it? His mum playfully hit him on the back with a tea towel. It was a gentle flick, but he wasn't amused. I did see it, mum. Well, don't worry. It's a mystery where your brother's pad is. Mark wasn't concerned. He, has, he had his Batmobile. The major flew down some branches. Well, I'm actually very impressed, sir. Boris is doing very well. Worked hard. Come here, Boris. Boris was blushing. He was suddenly feeling very shy. Bring the pad and crayons with you. Yes, Major. They showed the tree their work, flicking through the pages of maths. Some, some words, and some words were written down. My joke was quiet. Even the Major looked uneasy. He was genuinely impressed with Boris's work. And now it, he felt he hadn't reached the tree's expectations. Mighty Oak finally spoke. This is incredible work. The reason he was so quiet was he was so moved. They had worked so hard and achieved so much. More than Mighty Oak had expected. This is marvellous. 
I expected you to be at this level, perhaps day three. I'm so impressed. Major, what a teacher you are, and Boris, what a pupil. Do you know tomorrow? Could we concentrate on art, please? Right you are. I'd better be off. Dulcie will it be expecting me. Dulcie? said Boris. My wife, lad. The Major bid them farewell. Tomorrow, my lad. Goodbye. Mighty Oak? Yes, Boris? Oh, hello, Timmy. Hello, Boris. May I ask you a question, please? Of course. How does this help to raise money for my zoo? My boy, you will see. We just need a couple of days. Suddenly a buzzard crash-landed on Mighty Oak, giving Timmy and Boris a fright. You Mighty Oak? Yes, I am. Timmy whispered to Boris. He talks funny. Boris laughed. I, fella, I'm from Scotland. Tis a long, long way to my home. For I have news for you, Mighty Tree. We have found... He glanced at Boris pleasingly. Yes, I'm sure. Seeing this wee fella, we have found what you want. Escape, escape plan for tomorrow night. Arrival tomorrow. That's fabulous news. Boris looked at Timmy as if to say, what the heck's going on? Timmy just shrugged his shoulders. He wasn't a bit bothered. The mighty tree knew what was going on and that was good enough for him. It was now 10pm in a place called Aldergrath in Dumfries and Galloway in Scotland. Robert Burns had actually farmed close by in Ellisland. There were some rats and a couple of squirrels, also a fox. They were crawling through the hedge of a little cottage. As they entered into the garden, they saw on the left a vegetable patch. It had all the vegetables growing you can imagine. And on the right, there was a large wire cage with branches placed in the middle. It was a runway for their new friend, who had agreed to help my Oak. They approached the cage. Seamus, the red fox called out quietly. Hello. There was movement on one of the branches. They saw long arms stretch as Seamus woke up. He ran along the branch. I thought you were never coming. Seamus was now in the moonlight. They got a clear view of him. He was a white-headed capuchin monkey, a year older than Boris. Red the fox asked Seamus what he knew so far. Seamus replied, I had a visit yesterday from a pigeon, telling me Mighty Oak desperately needed my help and that I did not have to do this, but it would help more capuchins I, and I had to come with you if I agreed to accept the mission. Right, said Red. Seamus, I have to ask you again. This is a very important question. Do you wish to help us? Yes, I do. Right, now how do we get you out of here? In the shed there is some pliers. Jed never looks locks the shed. Right, the rat stayed behind. Seamus, can we dig underneath? You could, but it would take too long. And the pigeon suggested we, met, we change as little as possible. It takes longer to discover I'm missing. What's Jed like, Seamus? Oh, he's all right, actually. I would love to have a friend, but I can't see that happening. Where were you born? I'm honestly not sure. My earliest memory was being in a van going to a market. They were not nice to us. They hit us. Us? So there's two of you then. There was I, me and Darcy, but Jed needed some money, so he sold her to a zoo. Red and the squirrel returned with the pliers. Squirrels returned with the pliers. Red said we could go round the side, cut at the bottom, more difficult to spot. Red placed the pliers on the wire. This was harder than he thought. Alistair, can you help, please? Might need you, Cameron, as well. The two squirrels ran around the corner to help Rod. Red. Seamus jumped to the ground and ran to the corner to help Red. The rats watched on through the netted wire. Red said, look, I'll push the handle down. Can you push the other up? Yes, of course. Ouch, get out of my way. Cameron, you're on my toe. Sorry, Alistair. Red said, shh, doesn't matter which one of you. Please, I'll do it, said Alistair, shoving Cameron out of the way. Red said, one, two, three, go. Red pushed down and Alistair was pushing the handle up. Snap, the wire broke. Alistair and Cameron swapped places. 
and repeated the process, snap, second cut. They went along the bottom until they'd cut approximately 15 inches. It wasn't quite enough. They tried to push it out, but it wasn't long enough to lift up to give Seamus enough room. Oh no, a light went on in the cottage. It was the kitchen light downstairs. The rats fled to the vegetable patch to hide. Red, Alistair and Cameron ran to the hedge and ducked down, hopefully hidden by the vegetable patch. Seamus leapt the branches and pretended to sleep. Their worst fear. The back door opened. It was Jed. He shuffled in his slippers and pyjamas to cage. He shone the torchlight inside the light, passed above the hole and up to the branch. There you are, wee fella, not sleeping in your box tonight. I don't blame you. Tis a fair night. With that, he shuffled back, entered a very small brick building. It was the outside toilet. They heard the flush and watched Jed go back indoors, and after what seemed like ages, the light switched off. They all came out of hiding. That was close, said Cameron. Right, come on, said Red. We are really running late. They cut along some more, pulled the bottom of the wire out, and Seamus squeezed out. Yes, they'd done it. Cameron replaced the pliers, and they all scampered the hedge and out of the garden. The two rats said their goodbyes. They were relieved. It went pretty smoothly and they weren't needed. Red, Alistair and Cameron all looked very pleased that the plan had gone relatively well, however longer than expected. Seamus, you all right, lad? Yes, bit nervous, being honest, but I'm fine. Good lad, said Red. OK, boys, let's head to the river. The four of them stealthily made their way to the river bank. There waiting for them was this magnificent, golden eagle. He was a handsome beast. Sadly, one of the last, the eagles had suffered a great loss in numbers due to pesticides. Seamus just stood open-mouthed. The, bird's, the bird was huge. It was about 30 inches high. It stretched its wings. <gasps> its wingspan was nearly seven foot. Seamus was now feeling a little scared and wondered if he was had made the right decision.